Coming into politics now, you have Nitin Gadkari, whose worries or woes rather seem to be just mounting and mounting. You've got a very interesting <laughs> column up on the website today, where you you know where you sort of uh, focused on how he distributed larges or you know. Uh, no, I just I, I just find it very strange because if, he must be a nice man, right? He, he's treated his driver well. He's been very nice to uh, complete strangers, right? Making them directors in his companies. And um, it's very strange because you, you, you don't see things like that. But that said, uh, on a more serious note, uh, I think this whole affair of you know making uh, uh, people who work for you who, who aren't really all that literate and all that uh, directors and fronts for you in your company is something that uh, uh, Indian businessmen and Indian companies did for quite some time. And some of the uh, more unscrupulous companies and businesses continue to do that you know so so if you if you were to analyze if you if you were to pull out records of companies at random from uh, the registrar of companies and look at them you you turn up many such instances what is surprising to me mm -hmm. is that in fact this entire series of revelation uh, revelations that have happened including the latest one which is gadkari's about gadkari if it is true because mm -hmm. we still don't know but I just think you know the, the amount of data that is there. I don't think all of it is going to be false, right? You mm -hmm. know, so uh, if it is true, um, I think what it shows is uh, politicians whom mm -hmm. none of us associated with using this so-called corporate model of you know rooting funds and forming shell companies and all that have started doing exactly that mm -hmm. because we saw the same thing. Uh, in the uh, in uh, when irregularities in the allotment of coal uh, mines came, captive coal mines yeah. came, we saw the same thing uh, in in uh, Gadkari's case. We are seeing the same thing in Gadkari's case. So it means that politicians have probably started doing this, which is not a good sign. You know, across so we are seeing this basically across the political spectrum. I mean, this whole you know spectre of corruption. What does one do to fix it? I know we've talked about this before, but. Is it going to be stricter electoral laws? You know, stri you know, party funding has to be the whole. You know, system has to be clean, cleaned up. What What is the solution? I think. Uh, see, the the good thing mm -hmm. is uh, there has to be a cleansing, right? There's just so much information that's coming out now, and I've said this before. I just think the dynamics of information have changed in this country, and I think the only people who don't realize it are the politicians. Everyone else realizes it. So we are headed for change. It's it's our own little revolution, and I think it's a good thing. Mm. But nothing will happen unless you have electoral reform. Uh, your uh, the way elections are funded will need to change. Uh, you you'll have to have stricter laws for monitoring. You, you you'll have to uh, give the election commission more teeth. So you so you need radical reform um, in in that area. Uh, I think that'll be the logical conclusion of everything that's happened. You do that thing. Combined with everything else that's happened, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I think we'll see significant change in this country. Do you think uh, the government is following, you know, a different set of rules where Do Robert Vadra is concerned, and a, you know, a different set of rules where Nitin Gadkari is concerned? Simply because I believe there are some reports that say that there they could be a launch of, uh, you know, a, a probe into Nitin Gadkari's, um, you know, company. I'd I'd like to wait and see what they do in Gadkari's case before commenting on this. But mm -hmm. that said. I think the instances are a little different because Robert Vadra, I'm not sure, or at least I have not seen any reports mm -hmm. and, and our own reporting hasn't uh, highlighted any instances of fake directorships, of uh, strange companies rooting money into mm -hmm. it, you know, uh, setting up of shell companies and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in Gadkari's case, we've seen all that. And if my reading of corporate law is right, then the ministry, the, the company's ministry, mm -hmm. is empowered as, as a mandate to look at the setting up of shady shell companies, rooting money without really explaining the sourcing, sources of funding and all that. Um, it can look at that. In Vadra's case, I think possibly the one instance mm -hmm. where it, it merits investigation is that whole overdraft issue, right? Mm -hmm. He's supposed to have got an overdraft from Corporation Bank, yeah. and that overdraft in many ways. Uh, was the seed capital for his entire empire and we're still not clear where that money is coming from so that particular instance i i think the uh, ministry is well within its rights to investigate and i'm a little surprised 
but that apart you know you you, you I, I think the cases are different because in this case you just have so many instances that have come out of fake directors and uh, shell companies and everything else that I think it, it's just going to be impossible for the ministry not to look into it. You know, it's interesting you mention it, mention this simply because uh, L.K. Advani has used exactly this argument to in 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 supposed defence of Gadkari because he's saying that look, it's only a question of business practices. It's not a question of using his position or using power in any way. It is not corruption in any way. That is one element of it. The second thing which I'd like you to comment on is uh, you know Gadkari's own future within the party and the BJP per se, as it goes into the next election, you know, the phase of elections, because um, in the sense you have Gujarat coming up, you have national elections coming up in 2014. I think uh, if you're in public life, um, you have to set an example. Mm -hmm. You And and to me, uh, an impropriety is as bad as a crime if you're in public life. And if these charges or if these facts that are emerging about Gadkari end up being true, then I think he can be he is, he is indeed guilty of several improprieties. It, 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 I think it's a, a very very retrograde step to sort of take refuge behind the law and say this is you know company practice and you know lots of companies do it or uh, it, it's something about business practice and not real. It doesn't really reflect. Uh, on, uh, I think the link they are trying to make is it's a business practice. It yeah. doesn't really reflect on his individual sense of values and individual sense of ethics. Right. My argument is that it does. Mm. If you run a company which is shady, then I'm sorry, but you are shady, right? So there, there is no difference. And uh, the second question you asked about Kirkkiri's uh, uh, future, I don't know, because you look at that party, who will they get? Because they. Uh, Remember, this is a party that has had significant troubles in finding a president, yeah. right? And and uh, the RSS, at, at least until now, seems to be very, very keen on uh, giving him a second on term. giving him a second term. And and uh, my reading of the relationship between RSS and BJP is that what RSS wants, it gets yeah. usually. Yeah. So, uh, but I just think there's just so much volume of material that's coming out on him. That at some point, they will have to react to it in some way. India against corruption. Now you have Arvind Kejriwal. You know, he's got out a blueprint. Uh, you know, we've reported on Arvind Kejriwal's blueprint for a party. How do you look at the fact that he's going to be combining forces with... He knows that he doesn't have a pan-India presence. So he's going to be combining or joining hands with a whole group of small, maybe even unknown uh, NGOs, political parties, or whatever uh, uh, groups that may may exist, which are fighting against corruption. Uh, what do you think of or that? Or fighting for other things. Or yes. I think it's a good idea. I think yeah. it's a brilliant idea because you don't have too much time. Hmm. You don't have uh, time to go and build a grassroots organization. These organizations might be small, hmm. but suppose you forge partnerships or relationships with thousand of them hmm. because there are so many of them, right? Yeah. And and they have a significant presence. Now, in some of these cases, these organizations could well be small regional parties, uh, which until now haven't really made a dent. But the advantage of having a small regional party is that they'll already have a symbol. They're probably already registered. If you're fighting a state election, you can fight as that party. Right. Right. It's, it's only in the national thing that he needs to get. So I think it's it's convenient at so many levels. Uh, but I don't know what it does for the larger ideology of that party. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think ideology is, is something that's... I wrote a piece about this a few weeks ago which, when uh, the BJP was uh, uh, launching a protest against foreign direct investment in retail. It's like it'll be good to know what the party stands for because because I don't think um, opposing everything the government does, but sure, that's part of the opposition's job, but it'll mm -hmm. also be good to know where the Bharatiya Janata Party stands in terms of economics, in terms of business, in terms of foreign policy. Because in 99-2000, which was the uh, which was the big wave, you know, 99-2000 was when they came to power, and, mm. and uh, uh, they had a very clear idea of what they would do in mm. various areas. And maybe it's too early to expect that, you know, uh, from a uh, uh, no, okay. or even he, from the BJP. Yeah. Because, but, but what the point I'm trying to make is, uh, he, if you forge a partnership with thousand groups and parties, what does it do to your ideology? How mm. are you going to come up with your ideology? What yeah. is your ideology? Yeah. But then, 
my answer to myself is that it isn't as if any of the other opposition parties seem to have an ideology. I, I think you're going to see maybe the next elections will not be f fought on any ideological platform at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll all just be battles of convenience and alliances of convenience. So there is a method you see behind Kejriwal's madness, so-called madness. There is definitely um, strong tactical merit in what he is doing from the long run strategic point of view, from the point of view of building a strong political organization, it makes no sense at all. But if you have to fight an election in 2014, I can't think of any other way in which you can do it. So he's made a start. Thank you, Sukumar. That's all we have in this edition of Ed Space. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more.